Seth Briars is characterized as an unhygienic and psychotic prospector who has resorted to grave robbing in pursuit of a treasure. He is obsessed with an unspecified treasure in the map that will lead him to it. This obsession has caused him to lose his family, his business, and most of his mind. It is also implied through conversation that his father left him, which might also be the cause of his lack of sanity. Seth has a history of working with Bill Williamson, but is largely uninvolved with the gang's lifestyle due to the pursuit of treasure. It is this history which Marson exploits to gain entrance to Fort Mercer. Seth was formerly a member associated with Moses Forth, his treasure-seeking partner. John Marson first encounters Seth at Coote's Chapel, as instructed by an old friend of his, Nigel West Dickens. Marson asks for his help infiltrating Fort Mercer, but Seth demonstrates an accurate lack of interest until the conversation leads to the story of his former treasure hunting partner, Moses Ford, stealing half of his treasure map. Goodbye, John Marston. It's been a great pleasure. I need your help, Seth. We need your help, me and Mr. West Dickens. Let me be frank for one second, partner. I hate people. It was people who got me in this mess in the first place. What mess? Look at me! Look! Scrambling around, looking for maps, half insane. I ain't washed in six months. My hair falling out, my mind's going. What happened? <laughs> what happened? My partner. He stole half my map. I never would have done that to him. Never! Look at me. Who did this to you? My partner. My boy, my man. Moses Ford. I don't have the facility to tell you what I would have done for that man and what I would do to him now. Why? Because he stole half my goddamn map. And what map's that then? The map, partner. The map that tells me where it is. Where what is, friend? I ain't telling you that. I ain't. <laughs> don't make me tell, partner. <laughs> it's mine. It's mine. All mine. Sure. And where's this Moses now? He's at Benedict Point. The law got him for exhuming. Some people, they feel differently. Not Moses. Him and me are the same. The self same. Come on, Seth. Let's go see Moses, get you your map back. Then maybe you'll help me. All right, partner. Let's go. Marston agrees to help Seth recover his map in return for helping him. They set out to Benedict Point, where Moses is being held by the law after being arrested for grave robbery. Marson distracts the deputies guarding the jail by stealing one of their horses and leads them away before returning to Seth. Seth knocks on the door of the shack before Moses slams the door in his face and tries to run away. Marson catches him and brings Moses back hogtied. Good job getting rid of them clowns. Now keep an eye out in case they come back. Moses? Oh, Moses? You got a visitor. Oh my God, Seth. They arrested me. It weren't my fault. Ah! Get the hell away from me. Get that slippery bastard. I need him alive, though. What's this got to do with you? Mister. Seth threatens to cut Moses with a knife for the location of his map. Moses tells Seth that it's an odd fellow's rest. Moses, you son of a bitch! Where's my damn map? Damn you, Seth! Damn you, Seth! You've always been a twisty little freak! I ain't telling you shit! Ah. Then I'm gonna cut you ah. up ah. piece by piece. <laughs> Till you find your tongue. Friend, this man's gone crazy in the sun. I suggest you take my advice and start talking. Shut up, Marston. I want to cut into a bona fide man's flesh. Ain't never cut into a live one before. Uh, uh, odd, odd fellow's rest. It's an odd fellow's rest. Now, get away from me once and for all. Well, ain't that a damn shame. I was starting to enjoy myself. 
think you gone pissed yourself, Moses? Those deputies went and put a bounty on your head. Best we clear it now. Don't need the law on our backs. I don't have no money, but I got me a pardon letter. Here, take it. You earned it for helping me with the Moses. Uh. Come on, we can pay it off in the telegraph office. Ah! Panic stricken, causing himself to urinate, Marston and Seth leave him tied up on the ground and clear John's bounty with a pardon letter. John finds Seth again at Coop's Chapel with a wagon load of corpses from Oddfellow's Rest. He says he requires John's assistance in bringing the bodies back to a disclosed location, Tumbleweed, to be searched. You see, I wasted a bunch of time looking for that last bit of map. And I got to thinking, Moses was a liar. And I imagined myself doing all kinds of unpleasant things to his corpse. <laughs> and then I realized... You realized you were sick in the head? That you needed to move on with your own limited time on Earth? No, partner. I realized... Moses weren't no liar. The issue was Aiden O'Leary, who said he had the body. Aiden died in that flu epidemic, and the bodies weren't even buried yet. You got the body sitting in the back of that wagon behind you? Yes, sir. <laughs> You're not even going to wait until they're buried before you... <laughs> well, they don't care, do you, boys? Honest folk, off to a better place. Apart from that Aiden O'Leary fella, I never liked him. They say he lay with his sister. I don't like women, partner. I don't. Not since Mammy died. Seth, what are you going to do with those bodies? <sighs> I'm going to take them back to a nice quiet spot and look for the map. I needs the map, partner. I needs it. Come on! Loitering with the pile of dead bodies ain't exactly the best idea. On the way, they are ambushed by treasure hunters who are also trying to obtain the treasure map. Marston then tries to outrun them in the wagon, killing any that come too close while Seth searches the bodies on the way. They finally arrive safely, with Seth having found the other half of the map on one of the corpses. By chance, the treasure map said that the treasure was in Tumbleweed. Seth tells John that he will help him as soon as he finds his treasure. Thanks, mister. I reckon I'll sit here a while trying to figure this out. I'm gonna be rich. When you're done with that, get over to Fort Mercer. I need you inside that place. After I find my treasure, mister. John later returns to Tumbleweed to find Seth robbing a grave and talking to deceased corpses at the old church cemetery. Hey, Seth. <gasps> Seth, come back here. Oh, hey, partner. I was just looking for you. Looking for me, what? Over there? How you doing? I'm good. Well, uh, see you later, partner. Where you going, partner? Nowhere. <laughs> okay. Nowhere wouldn't happen to be where that thing you're looking for is kept, would it? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Come on, partner. Okay, I was just uh, fooling. <laughs> partner, uh, you know, the thought of that treasure does funny things to me. According to the map, it's somewhere in that big abandoned house. They head over to the mansion where the treasure is supposed to be. Unknown to them, the center of the town is filled with treasure hunters, who then launch a surprise attack on the pair. They push towards the mansion with Martian killing all enemies in their path. When they come to the room with the treasure chest, Seth opens it. But all he finds is a glass eye. Yahoo! <laughs> Finally, I see the light at the end of this very long, long tunnel. <laughs> Seth's gonna be rich after all these years. <laughs> it's silk sheets and Parisian whores from now on, mister. <laughs> what the goddamn hell is this? A glass eye. I'm sure whoever that belonged to treasured it very much. <laughs> Stupid liars! Those stupid chicken shit maps! Making a damn fool of me. A glass eye! It's a glass eye! Stop with the tears and help me with Williamson's gang. And you can come up with another excuse to go exhume one of your old friends. Hunting dead man's treasure ain't done me no favors. Sure. 
Sure. I'm ready for the living. I'll see you and Mr. West Dickens over at Fort Mercer when you gentlemen is ready. Seth is devastated and angry, but still agrees to help Marston as promised. At the assault on Fort Mercer, Seth finds a way in. Though his method is unknown, the Williamson gang then let in Nigel West Dickens' stagecoach. After the massacre on Williamson's gang, Seth meets up with the others. Bill Williamson is nowhere to be found. Seth parts away from Marston as he leaves, never to be seen again. After the assault on Fort Mercer is completed, Zeth is not seen again. In 1914, a newspaper reveals that Zeth held a big sack of valuable jewels and gold into Blackwater that he found in an unmentioned location deep in tall trees. He returned to his family and reopened his business in Blackwater. In the Undead Nightmare DLC, Zeth appears relaxing at the old Brockus place, playing cards with his friend, the newly undead Moses IV. He suggests to Marston to cleanse the three new Austin cemeteries in hopes to end the plague in the mission Get Back in the Hole, partner. Fancy a game of cards? Not right this minute. You remember Moses, John? He's... He's, he's, a, he's a darn sight more loyal now than he was before. <laughs> uh, come here, boy. Come on. Come here, boy. Oh. Oh. What are you doing? We were boyhood friends, John. Moses is having a tough time right now. Ain't you, pal? What's going on? We're playing cards. Relax, sit down. I mean, with the undead walking the face of the earth, you crazy dumb bastard. That ain't nothing. Ain't nothing? I've seen husbands eating wives. Mothers eating sons. Graves popping open and the undead rising up. It sure as shit is something. Oh, boo-hoo. Big tough John Marson is scared of a little undead creature walking around. Moses wouldn't hurt a fly, would you, darling? Besides, this ain't nothing new. Folks in Blackwater blaming it on that glass eye you found. Folks! 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 Damn them folks, John Marston! Damn them! And damn you! Get him! Get him, Moses! Get him! After all I've done for you, Seth, and I thought loyalty was important to you. You can't hurt me. Moses, get him. Go! Yeah. Get him! Get me, Moses. Looks like your dog's lost his bite, Seth. Now, what the hell's going on? The dead have risen, and a virulent plague is turning people into flesh-eating crazies. What the hell you think's going on, genius? But why? But why? 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 Why not? Why not? <laughs> why the hell not? Because it ain't natural. Who made you Mother Nature and Mother Superior all at the same time? Who made you, John Marston? Same as made me, same as made Moses. Is there a cure? <sighs> These things tend to fade away. Now, if you want to get rid of it, you should go clear the graveyards. Either that, or stop worrying and become one of them. Now, if you excuse us, we got good times to remember. Happy times. Okay. See you soon then, Seth. Come on, Moses. It's your deal. Diamonds are trumps. Come on. After the cemeteries had been cleared, Marston returns to the old Bacchus place to inform Seth that the job had been completed. Upon his return, Marston finds that Zeth has thrown a party with a number of undead guests, Mary Lou and Francine, as well as a fourth undead that plays the fiddle. Marston is initially upset that clearing the graveyards did not end the curse, but Seth directs John towards Mexico, saying that the cause of the infection may have originated there, which turns out to be correct. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs>
Well, Seth, sorry to interrupt your party. Hey, John, come join us. We're having a jig. <laughs> John, have you met Mary Lou? What about Francine? <laughs> I did as you asked and cleared out the rest of the graveyards. Doesn't seem to have done much good. Good? 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 Is dead good? Are you good? <laughs> Stop with your nonsense, you annoying fool. What's going on? The world's turning, John Marston, and the moon with it. Woohoo! <sighs> Day follows night, and hate follows love. Oh. Okay, you asked for it, Seth. You either stop dancing and start talking, or prepare to join Moses and the rest of these freaks. Are you constipated, John? You look very angry. You get constipated when you're angry. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I'm warning you, Seth. Oh, I'm warning you, Seth. I'm warning you. Don't play with the undead, Seth. Don't chase treasure. Don't waste your time searching for treasure and discover only a glass eye. <laughs> Well, warn all you want, cowboy. Well, that's a load off my mind. Why did I think about that before? Because we weren't dancing. Hey, John. Well, how are you? Would you like a drink? We got blood mucus surprise. Come on. Seth, what is going on? Aztecs. Or, or Incas. Or, or it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's all the same. Once every 200 years, this land is doomed. <laughs> That's why we love it. Mexico. Mexico, John. <laughs> ah, Mary Lou, may I have the honor? Oh. You're a sick man. Seth makes another appearance after completion of a civilized man. After Marston has eliminated the undead Abraham Reese, ventured through the Escalera catacombs and returned the mask to its rightful spot, Seth is seen stealing the mask sometime later. This revives Marston from the dead as well as reignites the infection. Zeth is never seen again and his fate is not revealed. However, it can be assumed that if Zeth did not put the mask on, he may still be alive. This has been everything we know about the character Seth Briars in Red Dead Redemption. Thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe to never miss an upload, and I'll see you next time. So